Welcome back to Carnavies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is a super complete set. Now, we've learned about transitive and swelled sets. A super complete set is simply a set that is both transitive and swelled. Pretty easy. If a set is transitive and a set is swelled, then it's super complete. This means that a class is super complete if all of the subclasses of the members of the class are members of the set and all of the members of the members of the class are also members of the class. Hopefully that makes sense. This might sound complicated, but all it is is doing is all it's doing is combining the definitions of swelled and transitive. Note, this can apply to sets and classes. So mixing up words of set and class doesn't really matter. Basically what you're saying is a super complete class or a super complete set is one that is both transitive and swelled. So let's take a look. Super complete is where you have both swelled and transitive. So we have a let set of sets here. We have a group of sets here. We'll define the set of sets as H. No. Uh, what I want you to do, give it a try on your own. Where do you think each of these fit right now in terms of swelled, not swelled, transitive, not transitive? Before we do anything, where do they fit? All right. We say that A is swelled, but not transitive. Why? Well, let's take a look. A has, for swelled, as its members, B and the null set. So the subsets of B are the null set and B itself, for the set only containing C. So all of those are present in A. However, what about the members of B? The members of B, there's only one member of B. It's C. A doesn't contain C. So A is not transitive. Let's look at B. B has as its only member C. Well, it doesn't contain a null set, so we can tell that it's not swelled to begin with. But what about C? C has as its members D, E, and the null set. B doesn't contain any of those. So I might say that it's not swelled or transitive. Yep, seems to agree with me. All right, uh, C contains as members D, E, and the null set. Well, let's take a look. First off, let's see if it's swelled or not swelled. It has the null set, so it has a possibility. Well, it has D. D, the only subsets or subclasses of D are D itself, the set just containing E, and the null set. Both of those are contained in C, so that works. E has as its subclasses both the set only containing D, also known as E, and the null set. Both of those, once again, are contained in C. And the null set, of course, is the only subclass of the null set is the null set itself. So all of those subclasses are contained, so it's swelled. The question is, is it transitive? Well, for it to be transitive, all the members of their members have to be contained in the set. So all the members of D, the only member is E. E is contained in C. All the members of E, the only member is D. D is also contained in C. All the members of the null set, there's no members of the null set, so vacuously, they're all contained in C. Making C super complete. What about D? Now, once again, it doesn't contain the null set, so we're pretty sure that it's not swelled. But what about transitive? It, the only member is E. E's only member is D. Does D contain itself? Doesn't look like it. So I would say not swelled or transitive. The same thing is going to apply for E. E contains, doesn't contain the null set, so it's not going to be swelled. And E contains as its member D. Well, does E contain all the members of D? No, E doesn't contain itself, which is the only member of D, E. So, E also isn't going to be transitive or swelled. What about F? F contains its members D and E. Well, F doesn't contain the null set, so it can't be swelled. But what about transitive? D has as its member E. E is also an F. E has as its member D. D is also an F. So, F is going to be transitive, but not swelled. And finally, G, which contains F, E, D, and the null set. So it contains the null set, so let's start with swelled. It doesn't contain all the subsets of F. The subsets of F include the null set, we've got that, 
E, we've got that, D, we've got that, and the set of E and D, also known as F. So it contains all of those. Subsets of E include the null set, we've got that, and E itself, or set. Subsets of D include the null set and D itself, that's all good. So it is swelled. Now let's take a look and see if it's transitive. Does it contain all the members of F, D and E? Yep. Does it contain all the members of E? The only one is D. Yep. Does it contain all the members of D? Yep. The only one is E. Does it contain all the members of the null set? There are no members of the null set. So G is super complete. So more formally, we can just combine the definitions of swollen and transitive, or swelled and transitive, as other people like to say, to get super complete, where SC stands for super complete, S stands for swollen and or swelled, and D, T stands for transitive. Definition is super complete in proofs. For all A, A is super complete. Equals by definition, A is swelled and A is transitive. Or there's a full definition which just, once again, conjoins the definitions of swell and transitive. You could just use identity and plug those in to get the original definition there. So, hopefully that helps out with super complete and maybe a little bit more with swelled and transitive because uh, we reviewed those a little bit as a process of super complete. Up next, what is a basic universe? And then we're going to start getting into the axioms of a basic universe, finally! Woo! Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. Watch a new video every single day for the whole of October on set theory. And stay skeptical, everybody.